Welcome to Higher Ed Live, the live weekly web show all about the world of higher education. We are all about professional development, professional development, digital empowerment. There we go, digital development, professional empowerment. We're all about good shows. There we go. Let's start with that. Uh, I am your host, Seth Odell, tongue-tied from the start. That's not good, but we're going to work on that. We absolutely are. We have an awesome, awesome show to get to today. But first, as always, got to give a special thanks to our wonderful sponsors that help make Higher Ed Live possible. Higher Ed Live is sponsored by Integral, the creators of the Schools app on Facebook. Be sure to check out their webinar series about how they can help you leverage Facebook to increase yield and retention. That happens this Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to send out a tweet in just a minute with a link if you're interested. Also, as always, big thanks to Omni Update, the leading web content management system, CMS provider for higher education. The company's web CMS OU campus is secure and scalable with great tools and features, deployment flexibility, and an awesome user community. In fact, it was the highest ranked CMS in customer satisfaction in 2010 in a .edu guru survey. So if, you're, if you need a CMS, guys, OmniUpdate.com. Okay, big show today, guys. Big show. We are talking all, all about Facebook ads. It's a really, really exciting topic that folks are interested in. It's something that everyone talks about, but few people are really harnessing the power of. And uh, we're going to be talking about it today. And I got a very special guest who knows all about it. I searched long and hard, high and low, to find somebody who has been through the trenches with Facebook ads, who's done it, has a lot of campaigns under his belt, and knows it. And I'm going to introduce him to you right now. So, welcoming today's guest, it's uh, Knud Bertholson. I hope I pronounced that correct. Uh, and uh, Knud is a New Orleans-based strategic consulting social media marketing specialist. He's previously created and managed social media programs for several national brands and performed trend analysis for Whole Foods Market. Um, but he's here today to talk about Facebook ads in higher education because he's done several campaigns, and he's going to share all of his uh, his expertise, tips, tricks, experiences, and we're going to learn with him. So, uh, Knud, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Uh, we are very excited to have you. Again, I'm so glad that we have you uh, here to talk about it. And um, guys, Higher Ed Live is the hashtag. If you have questions or comments, please get it in there uh, and have a good time. Don't be afraid to joke at me. Patrick Power is saying that it looks like I'm wearing a bolo tie because of my headphones. I'll loosen this up. All right, Patrick? But I'm listening, guys. That's the point. That's why we have the hashtag. So we are always listening. Well, we start each show with a little something that I like to call the Weekly Five. Five stories from around the world of higher education that you better know if you haven't seen them already. Well, the first one coming up is actually not directly about higher education. It's a really great story I really think you all should read uh, about how the Veterans Administration in D.C. hired a blogger that was criticizing them so that he could then blog for them as an employee and continue to criticize them. It's, uh, it's just a really interesting story about how the VA knows that they have gotten uh, a lot of people question, you know, what's going on with the VA, how they haven't really served veterans issues that well. And rather than running from it, they've actually decided the best PR approach is transparency. And they've hired somebody to actually come and blog and critique them publicly. Could that work in higher ed? Maybe is that crazy? But, you know, a lot of folks say we don't do things right. Imagine if your institution hired you as a blogger and said, you can blog about everything we're doing wrong. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not going to happen, but that was just pretty interesting. Uh, number two for the week. A uh, very serious story coming out of uh, of Missouri State, or sorry, Missouri University of Science and Technology. Excuse me. Uh, they had a lockdown this week uh, when a man was spotted near campus carrying an assault rifle. Very serious story, but uh, the local media did a great job using a site called Storify, which collects tweets into an, kind of an aggregated story, and it detailed exactly how they handled the crisis communication. So it was a very interesting. I give you know, my hats off to Missouri University of Science and Technology for doing such a good job with communication via social media and traditional uh, you know, avenues during a crisis like this. But uh, very interesting, guys. I would say check it out uh, if you haven't heard about it already. It's just worth a quick read. Uh, and now, guys, we're talking Facebook today. So we got to stick with Facebook, right? Uh, Facebook has announced this week that they're now allowing uh, people to tag pages in photos. Now, don't get too excited. They're not allowing this for universities just yet. This is specifically only for a couple types of ba major pages. Uh, and it's not for universities, but they said they are going to be rolling this out. So get this straight, guys. You could be coming in on a Monday, and you might have to actually untag photos of your college or university uh, when students have parties on the weekend. So it's not quite there yet, but if you work on Facebook, and guys, let's be real. If you're watching the show today, you probably do. You want to follow how big brands handle this. 
because we're going to have to handle it very similar very soon. So keep an eye on this. I really think it's worth it. So next one, stick in Facebook, Short Stack. Not sure if you've heard of this company, but they actually help you create contests on your Facebook fan page for only $9 a month. Now, what a lot of people say about Facebook contests is, oh, no, it's violating the terms of service. Well, this company has specialized in finding ways to work within the, the confines of Facebook's terms of service and provide a great contest environment. So if you guys want to do contests, check them out. There's a great article that came out this week looking into what they do. Very cool, worth checking out. So, guys, keep an eye on that. And uh, we are wrapping up the Weekly Five, but we're not quite there yet. we got another one going. That's why we call it the Weekly Five. There's five. Great story by uh, by Carlin on growing reach with Facebook ads. This is exactly what we're talking about today, guys. Facebook ads is powerful. Carlin did a great job with a great post talking about it. So uh, please check that out in addition to what we're going to be talking about today because it's going to be worth worth checking out. So uh, before we jump into the unsolicited shout out, I actually have a special weekly five edition, uh, which is that, Canute, you worked for a company. I want to make sure I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, is it Zeno? Is how I pronounce it? Yes, that's right. Zeno, okay, so the folks at Zeno, uh, when I spoke with them, have actually said they wanted to share some white papers with you guys. So I'm going to send out a couple links real quick, additional weekly five, with some white papers that they're releasing just for us today, being freshly released. Uh, and it's one is on tips to drive Facebook traffic, and the other one is using Facebook to help reach admissions goals. So sending those out to you guys, those are brand new white papers that just came out today, essentially. Uh, they let us be, do the big reveal of them. So hopefully those are useful as well because uh, it's all Facebook today, guys, all Facebook. But before before we get into Facebook, we have one more thing I do every week. It's called the Unsolicited Shoutout of the Week, where I shout any out any person, place, thing, or idea for any reason because this is my show, and that's what I get to do, and it's pretty fun. So this week, a very cool shout-out goes to this guy. Not because he's sitting on a stool, but actually because this he is the president of Southern New Hampshire University, uh, Paul LeBlanc, and I'm going to be sending out a link on why he is getting my unsolicited shout-out of the week. Uh, to abbreviate it as best I can for you guys, uh, there was an email exchange between the president uh, for SNHU and a prospective student's mother, or a student who had been accepted, saying she was having a hard time uh, trying to get the money together for the deposit. And what, what sparked from that was the mother asking, you know, can you waive the deposit? And the president actually had this conversation, very frank, saying, you know, I think that if you're having a hard time paying the deposit, I'm concerned that taking on the kind of debt that a lot of universities, including SNHU, require students to do might not be the best approach. Maybe your daughter should look into community colleges. And it was a very, very interesting, transparent conversation where the president of, of a university was actually saying, maybe it's best for you not to come here right now. Go to community college and come later. And I just think it took a lot of courage for the president of university to say, to, to actually publicly say, maybe it's not in your best interest. Because there's a lot of schools out there that will do anything to get every student through the door. And I think anytime someone's not like that and someone's looking out for the best interest of the student, whether it's their student or not, my hat's off to him. So read that article. There's a whole email exchange. Very interesting. Kind of controversial. Not everybody agrees it was the right approach, but I think it was. So I'm giving him an unsolicited shout-out. Uh, but let me know what you guys think as well. So that's the unsolicited shout-out. Trying to fly through this stuff as best we can because we got a big, big topic going on today. We're talking all about Facebook ads and ads on Facebook. So uh, you guys might know this, but one-third of all ads viewed on the Internet are Facebook ads. Uh, that's pretty amazing. That's some huge numbers. As you guys know, Facebook is, you know, over 500 million users, inching ever closer to 600. Everybody's there. It's the 800-pound gorilla, and uh, it's definitely time to talk all about Facebook ads. So, uh, Knud, welcome to the program, man. First off, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, guys, Knud, is, he's been through it all, and we're going to talk all about it right now. Uh, one more time, guys, get your questions in. We're going to cover everything as much as possible. I really hope you guys... Uh, can get all your questions in. So just to start off, um, just in general, can you talk a little bit about Facebook ads, um, how they work, maybe how they appear, um, just so people maybe who haven't kind of taken the time to notice them when they log in might have a better idea of what we're talking about. Right, yeah. So Facebook ads are, if you're on Facebook, you will sometimes see more often than not now on the right side of the screen, you'll see a small ad, probably a series of four or five of them, uh, a relatively small picture and about a sentence or two of, of text. Most often, they want you to click on the link or to like a page if that's what they're, they're advertising. And, and basically, they are the only way Facebook makes money. So if you like Facebook, Facebook ads is pretty much how the whole operation is, is financed. Now, if you're familiar with, with online ads in general, especially search ads, uh, Google AdWords and, and others like that, 
Facebook ads are somewhat similar, but also very different. So to start with that, uh, with a Google ad or a, a search ad in general, what you do is you bid on a keyword. So whenever anyone uh, searches for MBA or college or any you know keyword that is of interest of you, you say, hey, uh, I'd like to show an ad for this. I'm willing to pay this much to show this ad if somebody clicks on it. I'm willing to spend this much per day on it. Now, now that's great. That's great. And you know, there, there's a lot of good use for that as well, which we could talk about another day. Now, the difference with Facebook ads is that you're not just targeting people who are out there actively looking for what you have to offer. You are targeting people based on their interests, uh, their where they are geographically, um, what level of education they have and a, a whole series of other things uh, that could range from, you know, logical things to being in the geographic area you target to if it's a grad program, making sure that they already have uh, an undergraduate degree so they, they're, they'll be eligible. Um, two, you know, strange things that we've done is we, we've targeted uh, everyone who likes Lady Gaga and, and focus on, you know, the, the music aspect of, of uh, one education and people who like Glee, if they want to come and, you know, do school theater, musical, stuff like that. Uh, so there's just a, a whole world of opportunities out there. Yeah, and that's really, really a great point. I think, you know, as we get into this today, guys, you're going to learn that one of the real things that's so amazing is targeting people. And, and you can get so detailed in what you want to target. Uh, and we're going to go through that today, but it's really amazing um, what you can actually do and the power of it. Um, so before we dive into all the details, uh, Knud, can you just give us a background a little bit on just some of the types of campaigns you've done, some specific to higher ed, just to give a little bit of an idea of what you've done in the past before we dive into specifics within those and uh, why you chose what you did and the ways it all really works. Yeah, you know, we've, we've done a, a whole lot of different campaigns for different different clients, different schools. Now, uh, just trying to break them down into a little bit different categories, one that we did was for a, a, a new master program at Tulane, a, an energy master. Now, the, the targeting there would be, you know, we want to introduce, it's a brand new program. Uh, nobody really knows about it. We just want to get get some bus on it. And also because it's, it's very industry specific, we want players in the energy industry in the Gulf South to know about it. So that was that was one program with a very specific uh, goal and the campaign is still, still ongoing there. And, and, and a lot of that has been targeting Tulane alums um, just because you know they already have a connection to, to the brand. And now another Tulane one we've done is, is for the MBA program. We've done a very, very big campaign there with very, you know, a lot of different goals. The global aspect of that is one of the more interesting ones. Now, I'll get back to that later, but you know, a lot of people do Facebook ads primarily in America. We did a uh, ten other countries, I believe, in uh, five, six other languages as well, and some of the results were just you know, spectacular. Now, that also a, a goal there was to connect with alums, uh, and at the same time, you know, look good in front of prospective students. And, and we're connecting there with the, the the Tumblr blog that the students, the current MBA students, uh, manage to get that content out in front of a bigger audience. And that, that's been another great one. Uh, for the Ambrose MBA program, there was more of uh, the main focus was uh, alumni outreach, just to get a hold of all these people who tell Facebook that, you know, they went to that school, they have that degree, they are in that area, and, you know, you may have lost contact with them, but you can find them again this way. You can get them onto the page. You can get, you had some beautiful activity there, and, and people are really, you know, there's a lot of school pride, and then this is a good venue for them to, to you know, exercise that. And, and finally, there's one more to mention is for the for St. Ambrose, for the whole, you know, university level there as well, we did a very interesting uh, campaign for undergrad admissions, just, you know, since the other things were kind of heavy on, on, on grad things, just want to let you know that we've seen amazing results for that as well. Uh, that was a, a big focus on geo-targeting, you know, you pick your geographical area, um, in this case, we did a lot of ads in, in Chicago uh, and really targeted that at, at everyone there in, you know, we're graduating high school, who are in the right age uh, and, you know, sp specified a good ad copy for them and saw amazing click rates on that. So one thing you mentioned right off the bat I want to expand on a bit is, is you talked a lot about goals in, in these examples you just shared and talk about how some of it's click-throughs, so some of it is getting people to certain pages. So let's expand a little bit so folks know, like, 
Going into a Facebook campaign, what should your goals be? I mean, we'll get into in a minute about how some campaigns can target a Facebook fan page versus some that can, can try to drive traffic off of Facebook to you know outside sites that you own. Um, but what are some realistic goals if someone's thinking this might work for me? Um, what can they actually expect or should they kind of expect or have anticipations as they're going into it? Well, it really depends on what you want to achieve. What What's the big picture? Like we, we're trying to think of this you know, as a very valuable tool, but it should be you know, a part of a larger strategy, a larger campaign. So, I mean, you need to sit back and say, well, what do I want? Am I looking to connect with more alums to build, you know, get a, a critical mass of followers who are interested and who will spread and share things? Uh, or am I looking to just target new students? Or am I looking to create, you know, a better bond with the existing students? Uh, is this a pure, you know, is this just for the admissions office or is it, is it an alumni thing or is it a, you know, a full school thing? Uh, so, so that's it's I mean, you can put up ads in, in all sorts of media, but obviously you need to know what you want to achieve uh, before you do it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for us, we typically do it in, in steps. So even though the ultimate goal is not to connect with alums, we typically start most campaigns with rounding up, you know, some of the lower hanging fruit uh, get just to get a critical mass. You know, if you have a couple of thousand people on your page, you will see more activity. The quality of the page is better, which means that when you target new prospective students, for instance, they come to your page and, you know, they're probably going to like what they see because they're going to see a good debate, good information, people talking about how great of a time they had when they were students there um, or events that are going on right now. Now, uh, when you're talking about that, so two, uh, one thing to keep in mind, you said obviously it, it all can fall down on the scope of your campaign. It should always be related to a broader campaign, but you're right. I mean, what you can expect to see is depending on how much you want to put into it. And, and likewise, is that the same thing for budget, obviously? I mean, I think folks should know that Facebook ads can be incredibly affordable as far as, you know, with a click-through rate, but, you know, the budget can be as large or as small as you want, I would assume, correct? I mean, you could spend okay. – I did, I did a campaign for Higher Ed Live, for instance, when we first launched our Facebook page. I spent $25 in a weekend. You know, and, and was able to convert a lot more fans. Um, but clearly, you could spend hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars. I would assume, um, you know, if you had the right approach and if you had the the budget to support it. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, the, the typical first question, not just for, well, actually, not so much for higher ed uh, clients as for others, like, you know, what's going to cost? How much is a click and all that? You know, and, and I say I don't know yet because it depends on the targeting. So one of the reasons to spend a little money, especially you know, in the beginning, is so you can set up a fairly Right. So say that you for some of these campaigns, we started with 30 different uh, ads. Well, not necessarily different ads, but 30 different targets for maybe 10 versions of the coffee or so. Now, within all, just a couple of days into that campaign, looking at at the insights and, and the data that Facebook gives you, I can see how where they're going. You know, you can see this, this, this one's not going to fly. This one just taking off. So you redirect your resources after that. Mm -hmm. um, so you could say, I mean, I've had, I've just got one of them, uh, well, one campaign I've, I've had, uh, had 35 million impressions, uh, at 17, uh, cents per click, which is, you know, amazing, but I can't promise you that up front, you know? Mm -hmm. So during the millions, millions and millions of impressions and, and clicks that I've, you know, had through different campaigns, it seems to converge around a dollar pretty much. Um, so that, that's, that's typically what we operate with as, as a, a target and a, and a goal. And then if you're lucky and if you do everything right and you hit the right, uh, the, the right target, you may see them go, you know, much lower. Typically, mm -hmm. if you are targeting your own alums, that is, that is a, a fairly cheap one to begin with, uh, at least. Uh, and another favorite of mine is, and that's also another reason why you want to build a big following, uh, immediately of, of alums and others is the ability to target the friends of people who already like your page. Now, there are two reasons for that. In addition to it, typically being uh, costs uh, very good on, on the cost per click. Uh, one is that uh, it is highly likely that someone who is friends with someone who likes the page are more interested in liking the page than just the general Facebook population. You, know, you can say, like you said earlier, you can t you can do extreme targeting. You can say, you know, I only want to target people of 
this age, this education, these interests, live in these areas. That's great for the people who actually give Facebook all that information. Now, most people do give Facebook a whole lot of information. Not everybody. Some, just, they don't give a, a lot of information. Some give wrong information. Obviously, what you're, what you're doing when you're setting up a targeting is not so much targeting that group as, as you know, actively not targeting people who are not in that group. Mm -hmm. If you say that you need to have a college degree to see this ad, that means that anyone who has not told Facebook that they have a college degree will not see it. And obviously, there are people out there, and they have a college degree. They just haven't found it important enough to tell Facebook about it, right? Yeah. So when you first do these very highly targeted ads, and then you get a following of people who like your page, and then you start targeting ads at the people who like them, that's how you reach all those people who haven't told Facebook what you need to know. That's a really great point. I mean, all of the targeting is relying on the fact that that people on Facebook have inserted this information that you can utilize, and clearly there's not. There is an there is an essence of omission. There's a there's definitely omission is a factor here that they said. So start with people that haven't omitted it, and then work from there to connect with people who have. Um, we have some great questions coming in. Uh, I want to go with a simple one first. Patrick Powers asked, you know, what's a good click through rate? I know you were saying right now just around a dollar. Um, and before you answer, I'm, I'm just gonna say from an outsider's perspective. I would also say it depends on what you're trying to get them to do. Um, if you're trying to get an alumni to like an alumni page, uh, I, I'll pay three dollars every time. I'll pay four or five dollars to get someone to do that. It's worth it to find that alum and reconnect with them. So while there isn't obviously an issue of what's a good click through rate, it's also what's the value to you of having them click that. Um, so I think that's a factor as well. But but you know, Knud, uh, what do you think is a good click through rate in higher ed? Is, is it roughly a dollar? Does it all depend on what you're trying to do? Let's see. I, I believe that the question was about the click-through rate, not the click-through, uh, not the click cost per click. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, the click-through rate, you know, I'm sure we already covered that. I, I can't say what is a good and what is a bad one because it really de de depends on so many factors. One thing that will dramatically increase it is, uh, and I know we're going to talk about this later, is uh, having your ad go to a page and not to an off Facebook uh, property, mm -hmm. because if you are targeting a page. Uh, if you're leading the, your ads to a page, they will see that and they will see, you know, their friends on it. If, you know, Bob likes this and if they see that, they, you know, there's a dramatic increase in, in the clicks versus if you are sending them to your website and you don't really have that, uh, that extra, the social aspect as they, they call it. Now, not when, when it comes to the cost per click, a uh, little bit of the same, it, it can really different. I, I'm happy with a dollar. Um, a dollar is good, but it really, as you say, it depends how much, what it depends what you want with them after they get to wherever you lead them, and and, and how much of a of an action you have that. Now, one example of one I'm, I'm very a great one was you know, for the Tulane MBA program. We these global ads we did. Now, in one uh, international market, uh, a Latin American one, we had a, a campaign. The one I mentioned, we we had uh, a cost per click of of 17 cents. You know, which is great. So for two thousand dollars, we we had over twelve thousand clicks. Now, twelve thousand clicks—that's great. Just that is, you know, that's that's beautiful. But of those twelve thousand people, over thirteen hundred actually ended up liking the page or connecting with it. So now we're talking not just you know about how much you pay per click or you know what the rate of clicks would be. But really here, we can see how much did we pay per person who actually connected. And I would say that that was a very good, uh, a very good rate for that. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's dive a little bit more into uh, having a campaign that does target your current like Facebook fan page versus offsite. Let's go through more because clearly I think both work. Um, it does seem that most of the numbers coming out show that you have a better click-through rate if it's directing to a Facebook fan page. Um, let, let's talk about the mindset between both of those. I mean, do, have you done both campaigns? Which work better? And also, um, just why would you do one over the other? I mean, I definitely see um, benefits in both, um, but it does seem like a very easy way to drive fan numbers up for your current fan page. You know, it depends, again, what, what is your goal? So, yes, you will get more people will click onto your Facebook page than to your website through the ads. But... If what you want them to do is, for instance, uh, fill in a form on your website, I mean, if, if you want to take them, again, from your Facebook page to your website, you're going to lose almost all of them. Because one click is one thing, but, you know, the bounce rates are crazy, and, and, you know, by the time they get to your page, 
you don't have that many. So if, if all you want is to have them on your actual website, where you want to show them a whole bunch of information and potentially, you know, ask them for things, then, you know, you may want to send them to there. Now, a better way, though, is if you send them to your Facebook page and you actually create custom tabs. Now, for those not familiar with that, you know, any Facebook page will start with a, a couple of tabs for everyone. I guess they're called menus now. They move them to the side. But, you know, you have the wall. You have the info page uh, with, you know, just a static within the rules of Facebook, some, some text about your program or your school or whatever. Uh, you have the photos, et cetera. Now, what we have done a couple of times and, and we've seen as, as much you know, better results on that now than anything else is to create a custom tab so that when you lead them to your page, they get to your page. You get to keep that effect of, you know, Bob likes this. And you get to keep the, the like buttons on top there. So, if you know, there's a good chance they're going to click it. But you are now completely in control of the screen that they're actually seeing. And that screen can include, um, well, you can integrate, you can uh, put a video in there. You can obviously put pictures and links and text to other things. You can also uh, put in a, an email form so that they can ask you questions or give you information and you can get back to them. It's, it's really up to you. So you sort of get the flexibility of the website at the same time as you are getting, you know, the, the, the fanciness of having it on the page. Now, finally, and I know it's sort of a long answer now, um, Facebook is it's always changing which is one of the many reasons why you should probably use you know professionals because every other week something's new but they now have uh buttons that you can integrate in your website that connect your website with the page so you get the same information you can people can like your website you can connect it to your page um this requires typically you know it's going to cost you more because you your web designers and all that need to get and programmers need to get involved but there is a way if you have a serious budget and you have you know a serious campaign to sort of meld all of this together and get the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a great conversation going on here uh, on Twitter about what the, is it worth it or not to have a campaign that just tries to drive up fan numbers? Is it worth the money? Um, and, and I would say that definitely depends on who you're trying to drive. It all comes back again, guys, we're talking to strategy here. I know you know Patrick and Phoenix say they don't think it's worth it. Um, but I would say for instance with alumni, I will absolutely pay money to, to find an alumni that's lost, that we don't have their their real number because they only have a cell phone number and they don't use a school email address. I'll, I'll pay every day of the week to have that alumni member fan our page on Facebook so I can communicate with them again. Uh, but you're right, prospective oh, yeah. students, it probably makes a lot more sense to drive them off of Facebook onto a site that's targeted. You know, first, it's just an example. A lot of schools right now are targeting for students to get more applicants out of state because that they usually pay more money if you're a public institution. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it'd be great to have a Facebook campaign that you're only marketing to out of state students and they land on a special landing page just for them. Um, that I totally yeah. agree. But it, again, guys, you can also to, do, you know, there are other ways what we've done sometimes is, you know, you create a Facebook page for the class of 2015, 16, et cetera, so that you have incoming students connect to this page, um, which is good. You know, in the first year you're doing it, it's good because they get in there and, and, you know, they get to discuss the things they care about, but the people are already at your school. They don't really want to discuss these things, right? So you're separating them. Now, then, of course, the beauty of it is the second year, well, let's let's go backward. Already when you start doing that, you've got a couple of hundred of them or, the, you know, the early applicants and ones who are in there, you can start targeting their friends. So now they can see sponsored stories, for instance, saying you know that their friend just wrote on the wall that he or she is excited to move or whatever, um, or just you know saying that their friend likes this school. Hmm, maybe I should think about that. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. And then the following year, you can do you know the same. You can target the friends because you know people have. It's not like you only know the people that are in your same class. You know people a couple of years up and down as well, especially mm -hmm. on Facebook. Yeah. So then you can target their friends again for the new page. So that's one way of doing that. But just to get back to whether or not it makes sense to uh, have Facebook ads for the sole purpose of getting more likes on your page. Now, it depends on how many likes you have already. Is it a fairly, is it a new page or a neglected page where very few people have connected? Then it, it, it's probably more worth it because you want to, like I said earlier, you want to get a critical mass of, you know, a couple of thousand or so, depending on, you know, the size of your school, obviously, so that you get the activity that makes the page better, right? On the other hand, 
even if you have a lot already, since your general goal is just to increase uh, likes and you don't really, you know, it's not an urgent matter, you can set, you can lowball. You can just set a very low bid and you can set it to run either, you know, indefinitely or you can set it to run over many months. And then, you know, most of the time you're not going to get any, you know, click throughs because the price, I mean, it's an auction, it's over there. But every now and then, suddenly the price goes down below what you have set you're willing to pay, and you pick up fans at you know whatever price you think uh, it's worth. Yeah. So, um, a lot of good information here. Uh, I want to talk briefly about something you just mentioned, which is sponsored stories, which is something that Facebook just launched in January. Just so folks know, it's a specific type of ad. Uh, where you can place an ad based on what your fans do on your page, essentially. When they mention you or talk about you or like you, you can use that so that their friends see the activity. Um, just one of the ways I see that possibly playing out in higher ed, and the reason I want to mention is, you know, some numbers came out just a couple weeks ago that they, that sponsored stories have a 46% higher click-through rate than other forms of Facebook ads. Um, but where it fits in higher ed, I was a little confused. One place I thought was prospective students. Like, let's say you're you are targeting prospective students out of a certain geographical area or even a specific high school. When a mm -hmm. student fans your school and they're clearly you know maybe still in high school, you could show it to their friends and it says you know John Doe likes you know this school and that's a chance for their friends. So there are some ways to look into that. That's getting really specific and I'm not sure how many how much you know legs that has for higher education, but. With 46% higher click-through rate, it's definitely something probably worth noting and looking into a little bit. Yeah, I don't have much experience with that, you know, function yet, and and you know, sort of like you say there, it really depends if you have the kind of page where people actually have actions on it, and those actions are positive. Uh, especially if, if you know they could say that you know this and this person shared this picture or wrote this on the wall, then that's that's great, you know, mm -hmm. but. It, it, as you say, it's, it's sort of an early project. My impression, first of all, I believe that all these sponsored stories are on uh, the Facebook, on the home page, like on the first page when you log in, while the other ads are in all the other pages. So more people will see them because, hey, a lot of people just log in and they don't necessarily click that much through after going through their notifications or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just, it's more, you know, it's more featured. With, and I, my impression is that you also pay more for them. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing but, I want to get into that, that you've been talking about tonight is let's talk about multiple ads. Because when folks think about setting up a, a Facebook campaign, we want you to know we're not talking about setting up one campaign. One of the beauties of Facebook, you know, same thing if you want to use something like Google, uh, is that you can set up multiple ads that are very similar. And that way you can very quickly see what works and what doesn't. What do people respond well to? So can you go into a little bit of depth in that? And as you do, I'm going to pull up some examples so people can see exactly how ads can be very similar uh, but can help you essentially see what people are going to more likely click and more likely act on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, that's that's one of the great things of you're working with, with Zeno on this is, you know, we're, we're a team. It's not just one guy doing all these things. So I've gotten some amazing copy coming out of there. First of all, the most basic thing that we've done on almost all of our campaign is that we have different copy and different pictures for uh, men and for women. You communicate differently because there there's a difference in what they're interested in, you know. Uh, and you uh, just like you would in any other uh, in any other form, you do that. Um, we also have if you're not quite sure what's working. We ran for, for one program, we ran you know, the, exactly the same targeting. So we're showing this to the same people. Um, and we either did, we did four or five different images with the same uh, text. We had uh, the same uh, images with different copy. See what doesn't work and you redirect your, uh, your resources to obviously where you get more bang for your buck. Um, so the, obviously the downside of this is it takes more time. You have to create more. You have to set up these ads. You have to monitor them. But in general, I mean, it's absolutely worth it. If you're going to run a campaign for several months for, for possibly, you know, thousands of, of clicks, then that if you can get this at, you know, a, a better click-through rate and a, a lower cost per click just by changing the copy, then why, why would you not want to do that? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm pulling up an example right now that you had um, just from Tulane. How you actually, it looks like you used um, different language too. Are you able to actually target, is it by the language people oh, yeah. have on Facebook? Well, yes, you can do that. You can you can do by by language. I always wanted to do an ad for people who, who speak pirate English, uh, but I'm not sure what the product would be. Um, but uh, what I've done on most of these is that, uh, well, first of all, obviously, you know, Spanish 
is it interesting to do it in Spanish to people who tell Facebook that that is their language, uh, including obviously domestic ads. So what we did was we ran ads in I, I think about ten different countries and we translated the ads to the language there so that if you're showing the ad uh, that's in in french that's it was shown in france we got it was it was great we and we you know, had a little french focus on the coffee uh, you know, i have seem to remember it says that um new orleans is the most french city in america and the tulane mba is the most exciting mba in the world or something to that effect um which was which, which great and, and another thing that did was that it, it demonstrated the value of the social aspect because we have alums in France, actually quite a lot of them. And one of the reasons is that, you know, just I was friends with some of the French people who were you know, in the program and I was there. And I, I, so I started out with just 10, 15 people in France who, who connected with and liked the Tulane MBA. And, you know, I said, hey guys, this is what we're doing. You should like it. And then because of that, more people in France saw that someone they knew had this. And looking into the detailed um, insights for the Facebook page, looking at what cities in France do we have more followers in, uh, I can pinpoint that to the two and two or three different uh, universities there that send exchange students to us. That's great. I, I just think that's that's awesome the way you target it. Um, and this gives you a lot of information. Just a, one example on my own. I set up some Facebook ads for Higher Ed Live, uh, and I would set up posts that would link to specific episodes. So I'd say things like, you know, it'd be a little ad that would say, you know, go here to learn everything about live streaming, other things. And, and I had terrible click-through rates. I couldn't figure out why. And I think it was because maybe people thought it was spammy or they, they thought it was some kind of hook or joke. And But I had the best click-through rates when I simply had an ad that just said Higher Ed Live, live weekly web show about higher education. Um, very mm. interesting, but it's just amazing how uh, you can learn for yourself because I think it depends a lot on your brand, what people like. I mean, I'm I live in LA and I see all these ads all the time. I'm pulling up here like Los Angeles bucket list, 365 things to do in Los Angeles. I'm not gonna oh, lie, yeah. I've clicked on that thing like three <laughs> times because I keep wondering like, am I missing something? Am I not totally getting the most out of my city? Um, but that's yeah, no, I'm I'm looking at that one right now for New Orleans, and for some reason the image they use seems to be three people standing in a river holding a very large. Fish. That's what I got for LA. Now here, yeah. I thought that was I, I thought that was special for me. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, interesting because you know because I have an interest in that. I I often go and look at more ads. You know, I look at the ones I have, and I don't remember the exact uh, URL, but there is a URL you can go facebook.com slash something ad board or something, and it will show you a full page of all the ads that are targeted at you right now. Uh, and if you're interested, like I am, and I suspect some of you may be as well. Uh, that's a good way of seeing what others are doing and, and you know, what appears to be working. Um, but one of the things, obviously, is, I mean, that whatever picture you're using, you know it's not very big, so it better be something eye-catching. Um, absolutely. Like, it probably shouldn't be blue, and it clearly shouldn't have a white background uh, because, you know, that's the rest of Facebook. Yeah. Right. I just think it's so interesting when you talk about targeting. Um, again, guys, just to just to expand a little bit on the, some of the stuff that I did targeting, uh, I targeted everyone that liked the Chronicle of Higher Education or Inside Higher Ed, but didn't like Higher Ed Live, and that was a way I could reach out. Um, but oh, when, yeah. you talk, when you talk about targeting, for instance, you know, so many deans in higher education are members of certain deans councils and certain organizations, and they're probably on Facebook. I mean, could you actually go so far as to have a targeted Facebook ad campaign for your institution? only targeting the same deans that actually rank you in the U.S. News and World Report. I mean, you could get very specific. There's a lot of, I, I think that the point is it's, just, it's so exciting when you think about how you can target and how you can run multiple ads that the, the opportunity is so huge. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, but so, Knud, one thing I want to talk about, though, is let's say you do have multiple ads, you're doing all sorts of different things, and you are campaigning not for your Facebook fan page, but to get people off of Facebook and either to your site or a specific page on your site. Let's talk about analytics, um, both on Facebook. Facebook offers some, some nice analytics. They just, as you know, they just redid their dashboard a little bit. Um, they offer some nice things, but also once you take them off site, obviously you can track that stuff yourself. So what, what kind of things should people look for and make sure they have set up uh, as far as analytics is concerned so that they can, once the person clicks off of Facebook to their site, obviously they can kind of connect the dots with how far they actually go. Right. Well, I mean, the data is, is just the beauty of all this. You know, we sometimes, because we do so a lot of that, so much of these ads and sometimes we're just we're frustrated that we can't just follow everyone from the minute they see our ad and all the way into you know application delivered and deposit paid um and then sometimes 
because we're so, you know, we, we get frustrated, but you need to step back and say, you know, if you compare that to all sorts of other advertising, you put a billboard up along the road, you, you have no clue how much it works at, uh, or not. With, with Facebook campaigns, whether or not they go offsite or stay on, on, on Facebook, you get great data. Um, so if you send them offsite and you go to Google Analytics, uh, now it depends on the level of expertise that you have in, in Google Analytics. And it also depends on how much control you have over the website that you're sending them to. But ideally, you would want to set up you know, a, a specific URL, uh, a short URL or anything like that, that all these ads go through before they reach their you know, destination so that you are 100% certain that you catch it. Uh, you want to make sure that your, your Google Analytics is, is ready to get this in so that they're, that they're able to separate between organic traffic from Facebook, you know, whenever people share something, it goes in there, and actually what's coming. Uh, that depends on, on your, your skill level there. Um, and it, it, it's often a source of confusion as well. One of the first big campaigns we did, you know, we looked at, you know, we have the, the data from Facebook said that, you know, we paid for this many clicks, uh, so many people clicked, and these were all off-site, and then we go into the analytics, and we can't find them. Like, we found, like, I don't know, somewhere between a third or half of them, and the rest were gone. And we're like, what what happened here, right? Now, it turned out that in the middle of this fairly long campaign, there had been a major change of URLs uh, in, in the uh, the system, and at some point, just the, the analytics had not been configured correctly or, or, or something like that. But, you know, we were able to dig through, and we found pretty much all of them, but it's just so you're aware of it. If you do this for the first time, you go in there and you're like, hey, didn't I pay for, you know, a thousand clicks and I only buy 500? Uh, that's something that you'd rather think about before and make sure you set it up correctly. It's a really good point. Again, obviously, you want to know the value you're getting, and the only way you can do that is by you know following the numbers as as best as possible. And uh, and again, that's the beauty of Facebook ads. You can see so much of try different things, and then once they get to your site, see how far they oh, yeah. go. Um, so so as we're wrapping up a little bit, what are some other results that you've seen? I mean, I, I want to make sure I have found that Facebook ads is incredibly powerful. It's incredibly cheap to start doing. It's worth starting, if nothing else, to experiment with. But you know, can you share a few more results of what you've seen, just so folks know whether or not this is something that they need to go into the office tomorrow and raise at that Monday morning meeting and say, you know, if we're not doing this, maybe it's something we should really consider. Right. I mean, we've seen examples of you know a school targeting a a, a, a geographical area other than the one they're in and getting an amazing uh, you know an amazing uh, click through rate and getting thousands and thousands of new people from there onto their website where they read the information. And later, when we were looking at the, you know, the school was looking at, at their numbers, they saw a, a solid increase in applicants from that area. Uh, that, was, that was great. Uh, we obviously see a lot of, of you know, increased traffic to the website. And then obviously, it depends on how good are you, uh, you know, how good is your website? What do you do that? Uh, it's important to remember that where you, especially if you're trying to get in prospective students where you are going to apply to schools sort of a big deal it's not you're not going to follow one ad and go like oh wow and then you're going to immediately fill in the application you know maybe some do most people do not most people they bookmark it they come back later they remember it they come back later they may even come back a year or two later you know it's it's not you're not selling you know it's not a click here and then you have your shoes shipped to you in the mail or something like that so you need to take sort of a long uh, long view of a lot of these things. Now, uh, great results that you you see much quicker is when you're connecting with alums or current students, and you see they you know, they flock to your your fan your page, and you get activity. People out of the blue will start sharing pictures from when they were there, or you know remembering professors and talking about good things, and you have you have something good um, going on that. So so that's one thing. But there's one more thing, which is sort of the next level of what you also see. When you do a campaign, at least of a certain size, you get amazing data. You know, if you do enough, you get big numbers. Facebook will, even Facebook will give you some reports that are quite you know, impressive, where you see people who like your page have the following other likes, people who click through this uh, typically like the following, you know, books and music and, and TV and, and, and all that, and you can get a whole lot of information. You can also see if you run like a nationwide ad, you can see where people 
click from, you may be surprised to find that there is a geographic area where people are much more interested in you than you are uh, and than you, than you knew. You may also find another area you thought was you know, key and, and nothing's going on there, and that could be a reason to look into uh, some other things. So what we do a lot is as soon as we get a good set of data, we dive into that and we find really interesting things and we use that um, to target. Now, there's one last example on that was when we did, so we did 10 countries for this one, the global campaign. And, you know, very soon we saw one, uh, one country, and especially, and but some others as well, that just did much better than the others. So immediately we put more so the resources there. Now, the one, the country that really blew up, we were able to now plan for, so they're actually, the admissions office is going down there and having a meeting and inviting people who are already connected to the Facebook page to come to an information meeting about coming to America and going to school. And now you, you have like a whole new cluster of literally thousands of people who like that page who live in another country and have no other connection. Yeah, that some of the stuff, that's just, you know, it's some pretty powerful stuff. Those are some really great examples just showing that, you know, you can do a lot with it. And, uh, you know, as we start to wrap up the show tonight, guys, I, I just want to leave my final takeaway before I pass it off, obviously, to Canute, who's, who's the real expert here, and just say that, you know, obviously, I think Facebook ads are really powerful. Clearly, guys, we're talking about nearly 600 million people. Uh, it, it just makes sense to be there. It's affordable. You can really customize it a lot. Um, but the bottom line is that we both thought that tonight is it really falls into what your strategy is. So you, I don't want you guys to run off from the show tonight and think like, okay, how can I use Facebook ads? Instead, think, what are my current strategies or goals? You know, Am I working to engage lost alumni? Or am I trying to encourage prospective students from out of state or certain areas? Or am I trying to target certain individuals that are current students to go find some event page on our site? Whatever your goals are now, look at those goals, your strategic goals now, and then think, how can I utilize Facebook ads to, to help with that? I think that's the best way to leave today. It's not thinking, what can I make an ad campaign about? But instead, what am I currently trying to do in general as far as marketing and reaching out to people is concerned? And then look at the power of Facebook because you can do a lot with it. But that would be my final takeaway. But Knut, I'm going to pass to you for, for final thoughts since obviously you're the one who's been through this so much before. Right. Thank you. And you know, thanks for having me on. And I also I see on, on, on Twitter here that Patrick Powers uh, shared that uh, the Facebook ad board that I mentioned earlier. If you click mm -hmm. on there, you can see what they're sending you away and maybe get some, some inspiration. But you know, I, I think you did a good job summing it up here. You know, Facebook ads, an amazing tool. You know, like most tools, you use it with other tools as well. So, you know, you make, you think about what's your strategy, what do you want to achieve, what's your budget, you know, what are your alternatives? Are you thinking, are you going to put money into, you know, billboards next to the road? Are you going to put it into magazine? Are you going to put it in, you know, creating prints? Or are you going to put it into to Facebook ads? And you, you probably want to have, you know, a good mix of all those things. And, and if you want to to be, you know, get out there and be a little bit early, get some good ads out, get some good data from them, learn from the campaigns you are running. Uh, you have amazing potential to reach a lot of people, both existing students, uh, alums, prospective students, and also just in, you know, near the school in your local community, just building your brand as, you know, an institution. That too, we've seen a lot of great uh, connectors like that as well. Yeah, really good point. So, so Knut, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Um, you know, I have to say, you know, guys, so you guys know, I mean, Knut's been through this. He's done it a lot before, uh, and he obviously does have a, a company that, that offers these services. Since he did come here, you know, and spend the last, <laughs> geez, 50 minutes sharing all this with us so we could go do it ourselves. Uh, Knut, I got to let you know, man, give a plug. You know, what's your website or where can people find you on Twitter, you know, if folks are interested in either asking more questions or possibly, you know, working with you on some future campaigns? Yeah, you can find me on, on knudr.com, that's K-N-U-D-R.com, and uh, Twitter as well, it's it's at knudr, K-N-U-D-R, uh, and uh, you know, I really hope to hear from some of you, and I'll be glad to answer more questions if you have them. Great. Well, Knud, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Thank you guys so much Thanks for, again for, having me. Yeah, for watching. Uh, guys, this has been Higher Ed Live, uh, and I want to know before we actually shove off, Next week, big show, Web Governance in Higher Education with the one, the only, the legendary Mark Greenfield. Very interesting topic on the future of web and higher ed, and uh, it's a big topic, and Mark's the perfect person to talk about it. So I'm really looking forward to that. And, uh, guys, so that's going to be next week. I'm going to be starting to travel a lot this summer. I'm giving an initial secret announcement to you guys, Higher Ed Live on the road. 
I'm coming to Orlando, Boston, Albany, Chicago. We're going to be announcing some stuff in the next few weeks. A lot of live shows, a lot of tweet-ups, a lot of me buying you a beer at a bar because that's what I'm all about, meeting up. So watch HighRedLive.com for all that information. Tune in next week for the great show with Mark. Uh, and I'm finally just going to plug our sponsors on our way out because they are, as always, the backbone of this program. Help me do what I do best. So thank you guys so much for watching. And thank you to Integral, the creators of the Schools app on Facebook. Check them out to see how you can increase yield and retention with Facebook. Awesome, guys. And check out Omni Update, the best CMS in higher ed. Great people. Awesome company. Good times. This has been Higher Ed Live. Until next time, take care. Thank you guys, as always. And I will see you soon.